Hi everyone, I'm Jason with Level Up Investing and in this Educational Tuesday video, I'm going to go over my four steps to smart stock investing. So you will see in videos that I, that I create on Fridays, which I'm calling Action Friday videos, uh, I'm, I put a lot of this into practice when I'm looking at different stocks, different companies. But for this one, I wanted to just break down kind of how I do it so you have a better idea of, of my uh, approach. So four steps to smart stock investing. The first thing before even the first step, the pre-step is when I'm looking at a company, looking at the stock, I like to first of all see what kind of, what kind of company, what kind of stock am I looking at? So I am thinking, is it a blue chip stock, a blue chip company, or is it a red hot company? So it's kind of what, what it sounds like for the blue chip companies. You've, I'm sure you've heard them before, the long, uh, long standing companies, the ones who've, who've been around for, for decades, who have shown growth in their, in their revenues for a long time, um, often dividend bearing stocks, and companies that have been around through thick and thin. Doesn't matter who the president is, doesn't matter if, it's, if there's a recession, doesn't matter if there's major inflation, uh, no matter what, the company just keeps on going. So those are the blue chips. And as opposed to what I call the red hots, the red hot stocks, these are the ones that maybe have not been around as, well, you know, generally have not been around as long, have been around maybe 10 to 20 years as opposed to numerous decades. And these are companies that have positioned themselves and have demonstrated some innovation in, in some really key, key sectors, key businesses but they've differentiated themselves to the point that they are poised for, for serious growth, uh, serious uh, income uh, and cash flow uh, based on their product or service. So those are the red hots. So let me go over some examples of, of both of these. So here are some examples of um, what would be considered the blue chip stocks. You can see what I have here, the Johnson & Johnson, um, healthcare, personal, personal products, um, household products, uh, Walmart, of course, you've heard of that. PepsiCo, uh, not just drinks, but also all types of snacks. Uh, 3M, which you probably have many 3M products in your in your house. Post-its are, are just one example. Um, Procter and Gamble, again, uh, family staples, home staples, personal items uh, that you get all the time, and and FedEx. So some of these these companies have been around a long time. Uh, dividend bearing and I call these the blue chips and that's what a lot of people call them um, because they've been around a long time and they're very uh, uh, they're very reliable companies and then you have what I like to call the red hots so companies that have been around for some time but maybe not as long as the other ones and uh, companies that have really positioned themselves so I don't really have to go over these these three names um, NVIDIA, uh, I, I just did a video on that and if you'd like to see that you could uh, click on the link above there and I just did a video on why I am long NVIDIA. It's definitely not a, not a blue chip stock but uh, what I consider very much a red hot stock, uh, red hot company. So uh, these are examples, Amazon, Tesla. So now that I've figured out kind of what category I'm looking at when I'm looking at a company, step number one is in that in that sector, in that business, I always like to look at that company as well as competitors and I want to find the best companies. Uh, find the best company so that I can invest in that. So how do I do that? First of all, I remember some of these words from, from Warren Buffett and he says, your goal as an investor should simply be to purchase at a rational price a part interest in an easily understandable business whose earnings are virtually certain to be materially higher 5, 10, and 20 years from now. Over time, you will find only a few companies that meet these standards. So, when you see one that qualifies, you should buy a meaningful amount of stock. Of course, with him, meaningful means um, probably $10 billion worth, but a meaningful amount. You must also resist the temptation to stray from your guidelines. If you aren't willing to own a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. Now, if you've been following investing, following Warren Buffett for a while, then uh, you probably have heard that last line before. It's, it's pretty famously quoted, often quoted, but I like to see the, the entire paragraph to see the context of that line. 
So uh, it, this, this type of investing for blue chip stocks is what um, is really based on, on that premise. So how do I find the best companies? I utilize uh, a number of metrics. And so I'll put this on the screen here. Uh, you can see what I have here are 20 different things that I look at. So it is labor intensive. It does require a lot of time and effort. But uh, if, uh, the way I see it, if you're going to be investing your, your hard-earned money, um, then you better be uh, doing the due diligence to, to make sure that it, you're, you're making the best uh, investment possible. So there's uh, several factors I like to look at. And when I take all these into consideration, then I get a better idea of, of how, how good a company is and is it really the best in its class. So moving on to step two, I know step one was kind of a big deal, but um, you know that, that's how it goes. You wanna make sure step one is right. Step two is then from there, I determine the intrinsic value. And so uh, I, I've done that on, on numerous videos and I'll give you an example that you can uh, click on the link up here. This is a, uh, how I calculated the intrinsic value for PNC Bank which was a recent purchase, uh, or rather a re recent increase in the holdings by Berkshire Hathaway. But you can see that video, I go over that step by step. Um, and uh, from there, uh, the step three, and again, this is, this is really um, uh, when, when uh, I buy the stock uh, compared to the intrinsic value. Step three is when I buy and I try to buy big when, and the key here is when, uh, if it's a blue chip stock, I will buy when I'm seeing a, anywhere between a 25 to 50% discount. 50 is ideal. Sometimes um, it just doesn't get there. But, but to me, that's very scientific. You know, you take the intrinsic value, you uh, then look at the current stock price and you compare them. So to me, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, as opposed to some red hot stocks. So uh, for these red hots, uh, it can be kind of interesting because then um, there's a lot of times when the company is in, in significant growth phase, maybe it's not paying dividends, it's reinvesting everything, and, but it's poised for, for a significant growth and a significant change in the, the way we do things or products that we, we consume. Um, it may never be, or well, not may, never, but it, it may be a very long time before that stock is uh, going to be at a, uh, at a discount. In fact, it would be oftentimes really hard to determine the intrinsic value of that stock because it may not have the track record like uh, these other companies that I'm looking at. So it's quite questionable as to when the purchase is on that. That's why I wrote here uh, art. So it's more of an art form, I think, compared to the uh, blue chips. Um, by the way, my stock investing portfolio, uh, what I really uh, go for is, let me get my pen here, uh, purple. Um, for the blue chips, uh, my, my general plan is to invest in my portfolio about 75% in the blue chip section and maybe 25% in the uh, red hot section. So I try to divvy it up that way so that I can have the majority of my investment in these reliable companies with good cash flow, good dividends over time. But uh, if I see a company that doesn't really fall into that, but I just, I really think it's going to be uh, um, a really valuable company in the future, then, um, then I, would, I would allocate that. So there are some other companies I'll be looking at in the future, um, which involve uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, companies that are involved with the lithium, lithium, uh, um, mining and a few other ones so i'll be coming up with those videos later on so step four after you've determined your intrinsic value and you've bought what i do is that i i then use compounding and time so uh, this really applies mostly for the blue chip stocks where i will uh, get the dividends and i would enroll in the dividend reinvestment plan which most brokerages will will have so anytime i get a dividend that automatically uh, gets used to purchase more stock in that company um, and then with compounding in time something that uh, will will develop and um, really generate some some significant cash flow and appreciation over time so uh, just to finish off remember that 
uh, I use these four steps, but at the, at the most basic, when I'm investing in a stock, what I'm really doing is I'm investing in the company. So I always keep in mind this, this principle, because then if the numbers, if the, the stock price goes up and down, I'm not worried about it so much. I'm investing in the company. If the price goes down, I actually like that because then I'll buy more of that company because I'm in it for the long term. Again, that's, that's for the majority of the stocks that I invest in. So investing in the stock is really investing in a piece of the company and that's what Warren Buffett always says. So if you like this content, definitely give a like to the video, uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Remember that I'll be doing these types of educational videos on Tuesdays and then I'll be uploading more of an action-oriented video on Friday. Uh, that includes stocks that I'm evaluating, stocks that I'm buying, or something I bought during the week, uh, or if I am gonna hold on buying it because it's not the stock price I'm looking at, and why am I holding. So that's gonna be on Fridays. So I hope you like this video, and I will see you on the next one.